Hello everyone, uh, this is Timan Dakoria and me and my entire team uh, worked on a project called Leaf Disease Detection. Uh, we thought of doing this project because especially in India where most of the people are dependent on agriculture, it is very important for them, for the crops to do well for them. You know, they depend on, the, on their crops, everything depends on their crop. Uh, the present way of uh, detecting the leaf disease is through naked eyes, which takes a lot of time and effort and manpower. But that is why we thought of doing a project maybe so that we can help them in some way uh, in making the process easier and faster. So what we used for uh, this uh, uh, for the project is the model that we used for the project is CNN. Uh, we thought of using CNN because we went through some research papers and we got that uh, CNN gives a touch more accuracy, maybe by a percentage or two. So we collectively came on to the decision of using CNN. So without further ado, I will let's let me take you through the code of what we have done. So here, these are libraries that we need to import. These are libraries and functions that we need to import to be used in the code in the process going moving forward but before doing anything else we need to import the functions and libraries so what does the numpy do what is a numpy what does it do it simply is used for working with arrays nothing is very simple now what is pickle now pickle is used to convert python objects into byte streams because as you know, computer doesn't understand what an image is. It doesn't understand anything. So it just knows bytes. It just understands binary. So what does pickle do is it converts Python objects into byte streams. Now moving on to CV2. What does it do? CV2 is used to solve uh, computer vision problems or do image processing. Simple. Moving on list directory. It what it does is it lists the entities that are present in a directory given by the path. Very simple. Now these are again some more functions and libraries. I will explain all these in the code ahead. So let's move on. Now epoch. This is very important. What is epoch? Epoch 25. What does it mean? Epoch means the number of times we pass the data through the model to the code. Now, why epoch is important? Why we do? Why we need epoch? I will give you a real life example. If, for example, if you are solving a maths problem, if you do the problem once, if you solve the maths question once, it will be somewhat clear to you. But if you do the same problem 10 times, it will be the end solution will be in your head like an image it will be so clear it will be it will be crystal clear it will be in your head like an image that is what we are trying to do here we are passing the data training data through the model 25 number of times so that the model learns from the data so that it learns if a leaf is looking like this it means it has this disease if a leaf is looking like that, it has that disease. If, it's, if a leaf is looking like this, it is healthy. So we are trying to make the model learn. Okay, simple. Moving on. BS means batch size. It is 32. It is 32. Default image size is uh, 252, which means the height and width. You know, we need to convert everything into an array because the computer doesn't understand what an image is. Look, we have uh, here we have uh, provided the root, I mean the path for a directory. This is where my this is where my data set is located. This is the path to my data set. Simple moving on. Convert image to array. Why do we need to convert image to array? I has, as I already said, the computer doesn't understand what an image is. We it only understand digits, it only understand binary. That is why every image is converted into an array of height, width, and depth. Simple, clear, moving on. Image list here, we have used again the list function. I, uh, here we have provided the 
uh, path of the directory where my direct, uh, my data set is present and what it will return is it will return the list of the entities that are present in my directory you will see let me show you look it is uh, return the list of the directories that are present in my uh, list of entities that are present in my directories these are all the directories that are present moving on this is the image size label binary now what is label binary what label binary as it does is uh, it assigns a unique value or number to each label in a categorical feature okay moving on pickle dump what does pickle dump do it helps in uh, saving the data in the uh, saving the object the update uh, saving the data in the uh, what is called the disk now what is dot pkl dot pkl is just the extension of it like we save uh, python files as dot py right so this is a pickle file dot pkl so, simple here we have printed the labels nothing nothing uh, nothing tough to understand simple numpy array again we have converted the image into an array simple okay coming on to the splitting part here we need to split the data set into two parts that is one is you will be used for training and one is be will be used for the validation what is x train x train is the data set used for training what is y train what is white train here? White train is the labels that are associated with the training data set. Similarly, X test is the data used for testing, and Y uh, Y test means the data means the labels that are attached to the test data. Here, the test size zero point two means twenty percent of the data will be used for validation for testing, and eighty percent of the data is used for training now what is random state if you don't specify a fixed random state every time you will run the code there will be different values for the in uh, for the tra training set and the testing set but if you specify a fixed random state then no matter how many times you run the code the uh, test data and the training data will be same simple moving on image data generator what does it do it allows you to augment the image in real time even when the model is under training it allows you to pass uh, uh, random transformations to the image to each of the image before uh, uh, passing it through the model okay what does uh, model sequential what does it do model sequential model sequential what it does is it stacks up sequential layers of the network in order of input to output you know we know cnn is has layers it is like a funnel there's layers in each layer has neurons and there's data from of on in each of the neurons it, all the neurons provide outputs so this is this is what it is going on here uh, Activation. Oh, activation. What does activation mean? Activation is just it is a mathematical equation that determines the output of a neural network. Uh, dropout. What is it? What is a dropout? Dropout. Uh, what it does is it helps in preventing uh, you uh, overfitting. It helps in preventing from us from overfitting. Uh, moving on. What is uh, uh, flatten? Uh, we need to, what uh, what does flatten do is every before we pass a data to the next layer we need to flatten the data in one dimensional all right so you see this is what the flatten function does okay moving on what is tense what does tense do tense layer what it does is it takes output from all the neurons of a layer from the previous layer and it takes all the output and provides these outputs to all the neurons of the pre of the next layer all these neurons will provide each of these neurons will provide outputs for the layer for the uh, layer that is next to it and this is what the dense layer does so this is the layering process here that is going on okay this is the model summary i mean how many what type of parameters and what 
how many trainable parameters one have, how many non trainable parameters we have updated. this is what is the this is the overall summary of the of the data set uh, the total parameters is something this is 58 lakh something trainable is this much non trainable is this much why do we have non trainable parameters you will ask me so why we have non trainable parameters is that in cnn there are layers which are hidden and the in each layer there are multiple number of neurons and each neuron has data so when a uh, layer goes hidden all the neurons can uh, in it goes hidden so we can't train those data that are present on those neurons so this is why these number of these 2880 number of data we can't train moving on adam adam is an optimizer it helps us reducing loss loss and all okay moving on okay here we have done the epoch thing we have done 25 epochs these are the accuracies of the each epoch for after the first accurate uh, first epoch we have an accuracy of 91 percent the second epoch we have an accuracy of 93 percent after 25th epoch we have an accuracy of 97.34 percent which is great i think okay moving on uh, validation how valid our data is here we can see that the training accuracy is a bit more than the validation accuracy which is normal because let's take again take the uh, example of the match question if you have practiced the question 10 times and if the same question appears in the exam comes in the exam then the probability of doing that question correctly of you doing that question correctly increases right automatically because you have practiced it 10 times but if a new question comes to you if a, if an unseen question comes in the exam it may be correct it may be incorrect you don't know chances decrease right so it's very normal that the accuracy with the training data is more than the accuracy with uh, validation data because validation data is something that the model hasn't seen before so it's normal moving on again the losses with training data is less than the loss with validation data it is again obvious if training data if the model is performing better with the training data because here it is clearly visible that the model is performing better with the training data because the losses is loss is lesser you know from the validation data from the, because it is lesser from the validation loss it is called overfitting if the validation loss is less than the training data it is called underfitting and if they are almost identical it is called perfect fitting now our model is overfitting but after 25 epochs it is almost identical that is why i haven't you know bothered that is why i haven't changed anything much because overfitting can be you know corrected with the help of by increasing epoch and increasing drop dropout and all but i haven't done it because we are getting a very good uh, percentage of accuracy data that is why we haven't messed anything up missed anything so okay let's see the accuracy uh, here we have got the accuracy of 97.34 percent now we have again saved it pickle down save the data in the disk as a dot pkl file now we have loaded the data again now we have loaded yeah so same thing we have loaded the data set okay yeah coming to this part here we have provided the validation data we have provided an input to the model to see if it gives the right data i mean right result or not we have i'll show you see here it is a potato early bright means the potato leaf has a disease named early bright and see our model is returning the exact value and with a probability of 0 0.999 which is very high 
it means our model is 0.99 percent sure that it is potato or leaf right okay now we have taken a different leaf here now we have taken a leaf from the what the healthy family let's see if our model is able to predict it or not let's see let's run it let's run it okay look just given the exact result it's showing potato healthy and the probability of this being the right answer is 0 0.97 which is great i hope now that the image is clear now that the overall picture is clear to you people of how things are working on the on the back on the back end uh, thank you so much